Hey everyone, Sean Frangella here for motiontutorials.net with a new one for the Maya users about how to get 3D objects from Maya into Element 3D in After Effects. So you can do your texturing and animation in the Element 3D plugin in After Effects if that's what you're looking for. So here we have this animation where there's this 3D chair that I built out and there's this nice little drawer snapping out with some stuff in it. And this is a 3D model that I actually built in Maya. So we can look here and here's that 3D model. And if I look at all my views real quick, we can see there's actually a bunch of stuff in these drawers. So the idea is we wanna bring this into Element 3D to texture it and do the animation and save some time on the render time. So what we need this to be to get it into Element 3D is an OBJ object. So you'd think you'd go to File, Export, All, or Selection, and just do OBJ, but it's not there by default. So that's our first thing we gotta tackle. We need to turn that on, and the way we do that is we're gonna go to Window, Settings, slash Preferences, and go to Plugin Manager, and we just need to turn this on. It's not on by default. So if we scroll down, we're gonna find one that's OBJ export dot bundle. And we're just going to click that for loaded and auto load and then press refresh. And then I'll just close that window. So now that we have that plugin loaded, we can just go to file export all since I want to export my whole project file as one object. And then I'll just name this. I'll call this chair model 03. And I'm going to go to file type and scroll down to OBJ export, click export all. And then in after effects to get that into element 3d, with the Element 3D effect on a solid, I wanna to go to Scene Setup, and then I'm gonna to go to Import, locate where that file is, and I have some other ones that I built earlier, and I'll just grab that and go to Import 3D Object. I'll get some preferences if I wanna load materials and some additional options, and I'll just go to OK. And there's my object. So if you just have one big object that you wanna bring in, and you don't wanna worry about animating or texturing the little parts differently, you could bring that in, and maybe just throw a texture on it, and then I could go to OK, and then you're good to go. But the problem with this is if you have something a little more complex like this chair and you want to do things like animate the parts separately, you got to be able to pull out more than just this one big object. And by default, it'll come in as just this one object and you can't really separate it. So we need to hop back into Maya and do a couple of quick things first. It's nothing too complicated. All we need to do is for anything we want to have separate so we can animate or texture it separately, we want to select it. So let's say our two armchairs and we just want to add any new material to it. So I'm just going to right click and go to assign new material and I can just pick a blend and I can just change the color to something else. And this is just for my reference. The color isn't ultimately going to matter. And there we have a material. So we would just want to do that for every object we want separately. So if I grab this drawer, for example, same thing, I'll just right click, assign new material blend and I'll just make it a different material. Again, the, the color we're going to swap out, but it's more just for reference. We can keep track of our work. So we just want to do that for every object we want separately. So through the brilliance of video editing here, I have this chair that I've textured everything separately. We can see that the drawers and the cans and everything in it are all different materials. Now I can do the same thing. I'll go to file export all. I'll call this chair model textured new or something like that. Make sure it's OBJ export, export all. And then back in After Effects, I'll just delete this model and I'll go to import and get this new OBJ file. Click OK for my preferences. And it's gonna import that. And what it's gonna do is bring in each of those different materials as a separate part of the object. So here we have kind of our main chair and we can just hide and unhide these or press alt slash option if we want to solo it so we can see how this brings in each thing so there's our drawer and that's great so everything is separate so we could change the materials on everything separately and really get started we could also rename all this stuff if we want to keep track of it call this chair and go through that process if we want to so here I have everything named. So you can see there's a lot of different parts to this model, which is useful to keep track of. And then I can just go to my materials and pro shaders or physical, or I can make new materials and grab any of these and just start replacing those blank materials that I had. So the chair could be this fabric, the speakers, maybe some sort of 
metal, same thing with the TV screen, the drawers could be kind of this other metal. And you can see, I'll just go through and add those materials to each part. So now I've gone through and added the different materials to each of these parts, and then we can just go to OK. And here we have that chair model. So again, it's all textured differently. It's working out nice. We can pretty easily swap in some materials, and now we could get to animating this. So we could throw a camera in here and get some nice little animation of it rotating around this and do everything that we would normally do with Element 3D. Now, say we want to go one step further. We got our object in Element 3D and textured, and we got some nice little cool animation snapping around. But how do we animate the different parts? That's kind of what you'd want to do if you have a 3D model coming from Maya and you want to still be able to move the separate parts around. Maybe we want the buttons to move or those drawers to animate out. We want to be able to do that. Well, let's jump back into scene setup. And what we have is a group folder and we have our chair model and I'll just call this chair model main. And the way we could do that is in Element 3D V2. So this is version two, so that's important. You gotta be in the new version to be able to do this. On our object within that group, if we click it, there's this auxiliary, 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 auxiliary animation, or I'll just call it aux because that's hard to say sometimes. And we could add different parts to different aux channels. So what we want to do first is go into this chair model main, and I'm just going to turn off my drawer so it's not part of this model. So I'll check off the drawer and my hats and magazine. So I have a model without the drawer. And then I'm just going to right click on that and go to duplicate model. And I'll call this one drawer. And just so I can take a look at what we have, I'll turn off my main one and I'm going to open this one up. And I want to do the opposite of that. So I'm going to light up only the drawer, which I could do by alt clicking again. And then I'll just turn back on my hats, my magazines, and my popcorn. So we have one that's just the drawer. Now what we want to do on the drawer is open it up and we'll put it on an aux channel. So I'll just put this on channel one. And my main chair, which I could turn back on, is just on none. Because in this case, we don't want to animate it separately. So now I'm going to go to OK. And everything looks the same, but if I go into my group, in version two, there's this new aux channels. And this lets us create a lot of little animations within an object, within a group, so we can really push it and do a lot more. So we can see that this gives us position scale rotation for each channel. So the drawer is on channel one. Now I could animate that position. I could even rotate if I wanted to kind of pop out that way. Maybe that's fun and use this new aux channel to create sub animations within our group. So this is a newer feature of version two. It really pushes what you can do to create this sort of additional aux animation all within one object. Because then we could add new objects to new groups and kind of push things even further. So to get objects from Maya and get them all set up and brought into Element 3D, can be quick and easy, but it's kind of a specific process. So I hope you learned a lot if you're a Maya user. And if this was super confusing or you're new to Element 3D completely, be sure to check out some of my other tutorials on getting started with Element 3D version two, some of the top features in version two, as well as other things like if you're a Cinema 4D user and you wanna learn about Cinema 4D models into Element 3D, motion tracking with Element 3D, be sure to check out some of those other tutorials I have where we can continue talking about Element 3D animation, tracking, and everything you can do with the After Effects plugin. And if you want to see more of my tutorials, if you haven't already, be sure to check out motiontutorials.net, which is the full website where I have all of my Element 3D, After Effects, Cinema 4D, and motion graphics tutorials all set up where you can keep learning. You can check out the tutorial section and do things like sort by Element 3D, Cinema 4D, After Effects, as well as topic like 2D animation, 3D animation. So again, that's motiontutorials.net. Be sure to check it out. And if you wanna get access to this project file or any project files I have, you can do that by supporting the show on motiontutorials.net or becoming a weekly supporter of the show on Patreon where you can get not only project files, but insider info like Google Hangouts and access to all sorts of stuff. So if you want to get those project files, be sure to check that out and check out motiontutorials.net for 
more Element 3D, motion graphics, Cinema 4D, and animation tutorials. As always, thanks for watching. I will see you at the next video. Do you like watching these tutorials and want to see more episodes more often? You can help keep the show going by lending your support on Patreon at patreon.com slash seanfrangella. More importantly, if you want to throw in a couple extra bucks, you can get bonus content like project files used in the tutorials, answers to direct questions, live hangouts for questions, and even request specific tutorial topics for me to use for my next video. Also be sure to subscribe to the show by clicking the subscribe button or visiting the show homepage at youtube.com slash seanfrangella. And if you're hip with social media and have a question about this tutorial, you can find me on Twitter at seanfrangella. As always, thanks for watching and I will see See you at the next video.